343 recently revealed a new gameplay element that we haven't seen in Halo since Halo 3, but how it may be a bit concerning to the 4v4 style gameplay, so stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. So recently 343 was on the Xbox Games Extended Discussion kind of interview video that they showcased on their YouTube channel going into more depth about what they saw within the multiplayer reveal of Halo Infinite and it wasn't really anything new that we saw but it provided some good context and details that I think you guys might be kind of interested in especially this new element that we haven't seen since Halo 3 being brought back into Halo Infinite. So if you guys like these news and informational kind of videos and want to see update with everything going on with Halo as it ramp up the release of Halo Infinite. Well, make sure you tap subscribe, everybody. So let's get right into the content here. So one of the really interesting things that was brought up within the discussion that they had on this show was one thing of that there were going to be no more ground pickups within Halo Infinite. What the multiplayer development team said that they're going to be having sandbox tool spawns for objects within the world. So things like weapons and equipment, possibly grenades as well, having these kind of like objects that where things will spawn on to indicate the players where you can actually pick these things up. We actually saw this within the reveal trailer as well. So right here where this player goes to pick up a VK-78 Commander, you can see it's like this spawning object that's on the wall right here. And then that's where you're gonna be seeing these weapons be popping up. So it helps out with a lot of new players that understand like where weapons are gonna be spawning. It helps out with map awareness. And so then you don't have to like spend so much time like going into the custom games and Forge to kind of figure out this weapon spawn times, their locations and things like that, because they indicated that within this, that you can see within this image just over here, that you can see there's this blue bar at the top of this weapon rack right here showcasing that this is going to be the spawn time right here so you don't have to remember all the spawn timers of every weapon on every single map because you can see as he picks it up the blue bar goes away and this one shot where you can see over the shoulder of the spartan when he's throwing the grenade does showcase like the timer taking a little bit more when it comes to the next time this weapon is going to spawn up right here you can see that there's a little blue bar now before it was removed so it's basically indicating that this once this bar reaches full, this weapon will be spawning right here for you. Now some people might look at that as some kind of newbie mechanic to help out new players, but I think it's more just to help out with game sense and awareness, and so that you can focus more on the gameplay itself, rather than have to rely on like mental timers in your brain, go like, well, on this map, the battle rifle spawns every 15 seconds, where on this other map, the battle rifle or commando spawns every 30 seconds instead. It's each map deserves its own type of balancing mechanics and it's gonna be very difficult to try to remember all the timers for every single weapon. Mainly when I'm playing, I just keep track of like the power weapon timers when those are gonna pop up or when the overshield or camera are gonna be popping up as well. Because there's been so many times where like, well, I need battle rifle ammo. I know the battle rifle spawns right here, but when is it gonna spawn? I have no idea. I got lost in the battle of the game itself. So rather than just like staring at the wall, just kind of, you know, camping in the corner waiting for a new battle rifle to spawn, I can see when it's gonna pop up so I can change up my gameplay to be more effective on the battlefield and so that I can come back to it and pick it up. So I think it's a really effective change. Can we also talk about how 343 and the guy who was doing the interview mentioned nothing about this new weapon that we could chance we got to see within the trailer? Like this thing looks to be absolutely insane. I mean, like, look at this thing. This is crazy. It shoots like fireworks at people. They get like a one shot kill. And he ricochets it around the corner, which is something so cool, which I was so glad to see a weapon bring back that similar mechanic that we saw for like the scatter shot back in Halo 5. Like, look at this weapon. This thing is insane looking. Like, is this a banished weapon? Is it a forerunner weapon? I mean, it looks kind of forerunnery with like the big bold kind of art style to the whole thing. It doesn't really showcase anything that's like banished looking. There's no banished logos or anything like that. And the projectiles are very different where I believe they use like red plasma as kind of like the banished signature when it comes to its weapon design. And it doesn't exactly look like hard light though. So what the heck is this thing shooting? What is it? How does it shoot? Let me know because this looks absolutely incredible. So I'm so glad to see that ricochet mechanic come back because I really like that about the scatter shot because the scatter shot is actually one of the weapons I wish it, we would see come back from Halo 5 because of that unique mechanic. This clip does a great job of showcasing what I'm talking about. So you show that the bounce shot kind of does a little damage. He shoots the wall right there and boom gets a double kill with like this rack weapon that he has in Super Fiesta. I love that mechanic because it just lets you know that like if you're able to line shots up properly and maybe tighten up the shot range a little bit, bounce it just right, you can extend the range of the effectiveness of that weapon 
to because of your skill level which is exactly what like we love about our halo games where like something so simple like that but can be maybe just pointless to a lot of people but in the right hands can make a weapon so much more effective and more unique within the sandbox so i'm glad to see that ricochet mechanic coming back i just want to know more about that weapon like come on tell us about it. that's the whole idea of these inter interviews right come on man another thing that was brought up within the discussion within these interviews is talking about a element of gameplay that we have not seen since halo 3 and that's the return of vehicles within the 4v4 arena maps we saw that in play right here with this map with a confirmed within this interview this is a 4v4 map called behemoth and this first of all i thought it was like a btb map for how much crazy stuff and all the vehicles are happening on this map because we haven't seen vehicles within the 4v4 map since like, since halo 3 so maps like isolation snowbound standoff high ground ghost town last resort and orbital were all maps that you could play 4v4 that had vehicles i mean i looked back throughout the games and saw the halo 5 4v4 maps only were just gun on gun Halo 4, the same thing. Halo Reach was actually the same way as well. So Halo 3 was the last time we saw this. And then personally, I kind of like that about the 44 being strictly like gun on gun, not have to deal with the vehicles. Just because adding in a powerful vehicle within the elements of a 44 game really messes up the gameplay and flow. So unless there's really good ways to counter a vehicle on a map, it's either crazy overpowered, or if you put in what vehicles within the 44 map that maybe they're not that useful, say like the ghost on isolation, then it's kind of like almost like a meme at that point because the maps are generally so small that they can't really traverse anywhere. They have very specific pathing that they have to go down and so it's not really that fun of an experience to drive around because you're kind of just racing around on a track instead of like in btb where you have much more freedom to move around however you please so let's like take a second to actually really look at what's going on within this map because it's total chaos that's happening right here so one person down here utilizing the skewer another person utilizing a ravager as you can see we have a guy in a gun goose right here another person in a wasp and then you have the other person playing like in a rocket hog as well so like how many vehicles are on this map? Because this is almost gonna, from what I'm looking at right here, this is gonna be like a Super Fiesta vehicle map instead of just like Super Fiesta just being weapons. It's gonna be like a crazy amount of different vehicles going around on here. And it does look nice though with the vehicle play. It like, does look much more wide open and more options for vehicles to play and how they can be a little more tactical with their movements rather than being like on rails like we've seen in previous 4v4 style maps. But take a look at this recent screenshot that was in the cannon fire that we also reviewed on this video as well. You can see right here, there's a Banshee on here as well. So, I mean, obviously they could just be testing out different vehicles or just setting up cool screenshots and stuff like that. But like, how many vehicles are actually on this map? Because most likely there's going to be probably at least two gun geeses or gun, gun guy, if you want to call them that. Uh, probably two Warthogs, maybe two Ghosts, maybe two Banshees as well. Like more vehicles than we can actually count for players in a lobby. I'm just saying that within this trailer, it does look awesome, don't get me wrong, but this is going to be actually like fun kind of gameplay. I mean, like if you're kind of just going to jump in for some casual blow them up experience, this would be amazing, yes. But for someone like me who like wants to try to do well within their games, right? Like I try to aim for like a 2KD while playing and just, you know, using utilizing tactics, getting as many kills as I can. That's how I have fun playing Arena. And if it's going to be like this playing in Behemoth, I would kind of rather not, and that's just my opinion though. Because when you're playing 4v4 and one person goes into a vehicle, the rest of the other team right there, right, on the opposite side, only have, have less basically less players to shoot at, which can be rather concerning when it comes to the gameplay balance. Though they did mention in the previous Sandbox Inside Infinite Development update, which we covered on this channel previously, talking about how they wanted to create some new dynamics for players that were on foot to interact with vehicles in some way, which we saw with like blowing up the tires to make it maybe so like the handling doesn't play as well. I mean, we've seen it with like the ghosts on like reach and later on where like had like the sweet spot thing where if you snipe that one spot it would actually blow up the whole vehicle so maybe things like that we could see going back within halo infinite or at least have a good amount of counters for on foot players to have against vehicles so they can't just go crazy on the enemy team because i've played 4v4 standoff and if you're not able to maintain the rocket launcher and the sparring laser and the other team has a warhog doing circles around you in the base it's almost impossible to get out of and it's really not that fun to play though hopefully 343 finds a good way to balance it all out and kind of give some new good variation when it comes to the gameplay for 4v4 and btb as well so if you guys have been out of the loop for halo for the last few days or so or missing any content from me recently check out the videos on the screen right here get a link to all my news and informational videos right there so thank you so much for watching i greatly appreciate it i'll catch you on the next one peace out